Hello, Paula Davis here, and I want to share with you uh, a revelation that had occurred to me yesterday that was, for me, pretty phenomenal. But before I talk about that, I'd like to tell you about something that happened to me eight years ago. Uh, it was April of 2012, and I was at my kitchen sink just doing dishes after the kids had gone to sleep at night. And uh, in my mind, I was thinking a little bit about just life in general. And um, I had been about 20 years into my marriage and my children were in their teens and early um, preteens. And I kind of lived a little bit of life and I was being a bit reflective and sort of taking stock of everything that I knew about my own life and what I had observed in my friends' and family's lives. And I was really questioning things. I was saying to myself, well, I know I've been working hard at making my life happen, doing the right thing for myself and for my children and uh, for my family as a whole. And I knew everybody else in my life was too. Um, I lived in a suburban neighborhood at the time and all those families were working very hard at their jobs and keeping up their homes and raising their children properly and making sure they're properly educated. And I thought to myself, you know, we're all doing the same thing. We all have the same good intentions, but we're all getting really different results and just to give you an idea of what my mindset was like at the time, I was extremely scientific, very logical. I knew that everything was governed by some type of law. There weren't any kind of accidents. Nothing was random in life. And um, my belief system was pretty limited to what I understood from an academia, academia perspective. Um, I was pretty agnostic, I guess. I didn't think outside of really what could be proven from a scientific perspective. So I didn't put a lot of stock into any kind of um, religion. I felt like that was sort of a, a belief system that could be um, proved or disproved, or it was kind of based on how you felt, not really based on any kind of scientific data. Uh, nothing wrong with it. Didn't have anything against any kind of religion. Just wasn't uh, for me. I really stuck to academia, what could be shown as hard evidence to be what was true. And of course, empirical evidence is aren't oriented entirely around your five senses, what can be observed. And um, I just realized people's lives were sometimes crashing and burning, despite all good intentions and inactions. Some lives were really accelerating very fast with same actions and what I understood to be intentions. And then um, other people are kind of getting nowhere. Their lives are staying the same. Uh, they weren't progressing, their kids weren't progressing. And I thought, well, how are we getting such different results when we're putting in all the same input for data? We should be all getting the same results, uh, which would be positive and progressing. And as I was thinking that, I, I was thinking to myself, well, you know, there's a lot of things that don't make sense in this world. Um, gosh, you know, I know for myself, I'm looking at this 20 years in, I don't see any kind of big pot of gold at the end of the rainbow here. As far as I can tell, uh, with the efforts that I'm putting forth, I'm kind of getting the same results over and over and over again. I'm not really accelerating in, in the way that I thought that I would be with myself. My kids were doing very well, but, you know, um, no big dramatic changes despite all the effort and work that I was putting into my life. So I didn't see myself having this big pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, as we all anticipate when we do the right thing day in and day out. And I really questioned it. And I said, you know, really, what the hell is going on? You know, uh, politics is not getting any better right? Despite putting all the right people in office, uh, despite doing all the right things. And of course, policymakers have more data than they've ever had in the past. They should be making better policies. Our lives should be getting better from the bottom up. Nothing was changing. 
despite all of our scientific opportunities, despite all of our data gathering, despite all of our efficiencies that we could create based on technology that was offered to us, the day in and day out lives of people, their economy of the individual person wasn't getting any better. Uh, people were all on antidepressants, uh, knew that increase in young people committing suicide was high, high rates of um, meth abuse in certain areas. And I thought, geez, you know, we should be getting a lot further along from generation to generation. There should be lessons that are learned and implemented to accelerate our growth. And as a people, our technology was accelerating greatly, but we weren't accelerating as a people in our consciousness. Uh, what we believed ourselves to be was still limited, but our computers were advancing very fast. We didn't have any kind of upgrade of ourselves as our technology was upgrading. And it was creating huge rift from what I could understand. And I thought, what the hell's going on? Like something up, something more is happening here. And as I was thinking and thinking and my rational, logical mind was saying, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? It was like spinning and spinning and spinning. No answers, no answers, no answers, no answers. Finally, it stopped. In an instant, suddenly, my body became huge. I was massive. It was like an Alice in Wonderland moment where I was huge. And the whole world became very small. It was tiny, tiny enough to be in my hands. And it shifted and it shifted back just as quickly. And boom, I was back at my kitchen sink. I no longer wondered what was going on in the world. I was wondering what the hell just happened to me? Did I just have a stroke? Uh, am I okay? I just left the dishes and went straight to bed. I said, I need to go to sleep. It's, I don't know what happened, but I'm still breathing. I'm just going to go to bed. And I fell asleep. Uh, my husband was traveling at the time, so, you know, it was on my own. And I woke up the next morning, and between awake and a sleep state, you know, that kind of in-between time of wake and sleep, boom, a poem came to me out of the blue. Like, now, I, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't partake in poetry myself. Uh, still don't. Number one, number two, uh, don't write poetry other than what I had to do maybe in high school or college for a writing course, you know, whatever I was forced to do. Don't enjoy it. But a poem came to me out of nowhere. Didn't know what the hell it meant at all. Uh, but I'm going to read it to you. And, and to be honest, the revelation that I had yesterday all came full circle with this uh, with the understanding now of this poem, of which I haven't really understood in all these days. Uh, but the poem reads, If fairy dust could be sprinkled across the sands of time, it would undo all the harms I've done to you and to those and still to more of whom I do not know. But the fairies must have gone along with their magical dust, instead of beaching under me, the sands drift over, around, and above. Grains gritting against my desperate pleas, I beg for them to take me to the past, to the future. Unwilling, they say, it is here where I must stay. So here I have been left, to stand in stagnant air of guilt, of fear, of shame, hand smacked each time I dare to start life again with disingenuous flair. 
But blame the dust and sands I can't, nor guilt, nor fear, nor shame. They are simply being true to their birth, to their task, to their work. Inspired by these forces, I too must be true to whomever I am, or am not, or wish to, or wish not to be. In short, I must believe I add value just by being me. As I think it, I can say it. As I say it, I can. Reach out one more time, eyes squinting, recalling past smacks in my mind. This time, mayhem does not make its way. No punishment stole, despite the genuine truth be told. In its place, a hearty laugh comes from the unknown. Go on about your life, creature, for now you know. Suddenly, a quick of energy bursts the black out of my soul, leaving room for the dust of gods to enter, waiting in ether for my true self to show. At this blessed moment, the sands of time stood still and fell, allowing refuge from the pain a flash of self-revelation, joy be known. Bless each tiny grain as sands sift between my toes. Now, I had no idea what that meant. It just, it's just, it's just, who knows? Maybe it sounded pretty with little words uh, coming together in particular ways, but really it wasn't me that wrote it, number one. And number two, I didn't understand it. But it did spark for me to find out more about what happened to me at the kitchen sink and maybe some insight on what this poem meant. And it's taken me on an eight year journey that has been phenomenal, scary, <clears throat> life changing. And it has now with yesterday, fulfilled my understanding of what is truly going on. And it's that reason that I'm actually putting this video together in the first place. The story that I told you, I've probably told maybe five people over the last eight years. Um, I've talked a lot about what I've learned as a result of the experience, but I've never put it out there on a grand scale as to what's happened. And, um, I'm doing this now. Maybe, maybe you've had a spiritually transformative experience in your life. And maybe you're searching for people that have experienced the same so that you don't feel so alone when something is trying to tell you something that's really going to benefit your life. So what I learned from this is that when you show up genuine, and it could be ugly, vulnerable, um, not at all professional, not at all polished the way we see our media put things out. If you just show up as you are with the experiences that you've had, even if it's outside the realm of what anybody else has experienced or understood, that's when you're really living life and that's your riches and that's what you can carry to your children to make sure that they do the same because I lived for my children. I said to myself, even if I don't make anything of myself, if I can give everything to them, then I'll know I've done the right thing in this life. And I noticed that everybody else was doing the same as I was. And what I realized was they were getting such minimal results because you can't give your children nor the next generation anything that you don't possess yourself. So unless you're showing up as yourself, unless you're really presenting your gifts to the world as they are, you can never show your children to do the same. And they will never fulfill their dreams either because you're not fulfilling yours. 
you're not fulfilling your purpose in life. And if you don't do it yourself, you can never show children how to do it. And that's why we have gotten so behind in our own personal development, despite our extreme advances in technology. And I have a feeling it's going to be a tipping point where technology will take over because we have more belief in it than we have in ourselves as people that are creating it. And I think that's dangerous. Um, it's definitely counterproductive. So I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to this. I hope it's of value to you in some way. And um, if you have anything to share, uh, I would be happy to, to hear it from you. Thank you so much.